I'm Lee Edwards, and you're watching The Miseducation of B3. As we become multi-sensory, we move beyond the limitation of the five senses. Born and raised in Walthamstow, or uh, born in Hackney Hospital, Mother's Hospital. If anyone knows about Mother's Hospital, um, yeah, that's where I was born. I was raised in Walthamstow, in a state called um, St Michael's Gospel, it's the world, St Michael's Tower. It was on Gospel Road in Walthamstow, right next to the market. Um, yeah, flat called Dyke Court next to it. A lot of memories around there, but yeah, that's where I grew up. What I was doing last night, I was fucking searching up my chains and shit like that, but you know, in this girl, just don't even have the fucking vision. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they always there when tidy up my thing, you see me? Childhood memories of music was like, you know, it was like the early, it was like the revival, the rare grooves, you know, like um, like the dub music. So a lot of uh, conscious music, like my mum, aunties, dad used to play, you know what I mean? Eco Mass, Echo Minor, Sugar Minor. You know, a lot of the artists, the artists that people still listen to today, you know, Budja Band and then, Stuff like that, shabaranks and yeah, that was the early, early days. Yeah, very, well, very kind of conscious, like, because, like, my mum's always listened to that kind of deeper sound. You know what I mean, more as, like, my dad might have listened to, you know, more singing, like, more, you know, musical, more, you know, when my mum was more, like, heavy, like, the music that she used to listen to. It's a lot more heavier. So it was like, yeah, my mum was more, not more, more on the like the um, the the the, um, the conscious side of music than my dad was. Sent her them three pictures. Oh, people usually pay this much and that much, but I'll do them for you for this. It represents her life. Something like that. <laughs> Record shop was a lot, it played a lot, a uh, big part of life when I was growing up because I used to go to the, um, the record shop with my mum and my auntie and that. We used to go to a record shop at the bottom of the market, I'm not sure what it was called now. And like, it's a supermarket there now, but it used to be like a little arcade you go through. And um, there used to be a record shop there. And my mum and my auntie always used to go there. So I was always like actively involved in buying records, but was me personally buying a record or an album because because obviously I started buying records when it was like jungle and stuff like that so I don't like I wouldn't rem and I was buying it with one of my friends Winston R.I.P's yeah he's not here no more but um I was buying records with him so yeah, I wouldn't really rep because he knew all the names, all that, the Conga Natties and all the, he knew all the names to get like what the latest records was and what the, what we was listening to on the radio stations. So, yeah, I couldn't really think of what, what record it would be. That would be the first record that I bought anyway. Activity wasn't too great, wasn't too great, you know, like 
And as we all do, we all go for it, you know what I mean? Stage in our life where, you know, you're not actually doing the right thing, but you think it's the right thing at the time, you know what I mean? So, yeah, teenage activity wasn't really, wasn't really great at all. You know, I was out there, I was, you know, I was, I was on the streets, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, didn't have any direction in life, really. I didn't, like, I came from a teenage years where, like, school and stuff, that was a myth. Like, you know, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, like, I was a very slow learner, still am, you know what I mean? Like, it's a, like, there's certain things that my people can do quickly that I can't, you know what I mean? Like as in writing and stuff like that. So yeah, I had like a lot of like, f like things that I was a bit slower on, but then there's things that like maths, like if you ask me maths and the quake, I'll come with it in my head quick, you know what I mean? But all of that stuff for like on paper and stuff like that, it was a lot, it was, it was, a, it was a bit hard for me, you know what I mean? And obviously at that time in them schooling times, they didn't recognize kind of what was going on, you know what I mean? For kids, they just thought you was just bad or, you know, you just couldn't learn or, and they tried to give you the help, but they just didn't understand. And now I think they're a bit more understanding of that kind of culture, or not culture, that kind of, uh, you know, uh, disability culture. Um, luckily today, French was tidy, get me. streets man it was out on the streets just you know what I mean doing anything to, to earn a pound note you know what I mean like we was just yeah we was just out on the streets you know what I mean getting in trouble with the police a lot you know what I mean and yeah finally that just ends up in you know where wherever it ends up that's prison that's it so yeah that was teenage life <coughs> Like I had a I had a relationship with music because I used to be involved with um I used to be involved with Risk FM, ten seventy one like ten eighty like we change up them dials and stuff like that. I remember because it was near Trace FM and stuff like that. So we was doing a lot of, um, yeah, we was doing like, um, me and my friend was doing like the roofs and that, doing um, putting the stations on basically, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, man, we had a lot of fun with that, you know what I mean? And I was like, I was hosting at the time. Like I used to call myself Leafy, you get me? So I was just a host on the mic while my mate played, you get me? He played, I was hosting. And then like, I just I just got into like, the mixing because it was me, um, one of my mates, Darren, and another one of my mates, Jason. So we used to like start, we just started mixing, you know what I mean? Because we always had Technique 1210s around, you know, we had records. So we would just, yeah, we'd just mix. And uh, yeah, and that's how it kind of come about of like us actually playing music and our like relationship with the music. Cause, yeah, it was it was always there, you know what I mean? Because as I said, we was listening to Jungle, and then obviously at these times it was Garage, but I wasn't really a massive fan of the Garage, so I'd buy records, I'd play it, I'd mix it, but it wouldn't really, it wasn't floating my boat, it wasn't exciting me in the way that Jungle did. So, you know, I was always I was always on the lookout for something else. You know that one. <laughs> it's like yeah. I didn't really find my feet in my 20s, it was in my late 20s I found my feet. My teenage years, I had kids, you know what I mean? So, 
where I've had kids and stuff like that, obviously I had to grow up pretty fast, you know what I mean? So within that sense, I, I was, I was like, obviously I was trying to do what I thought was necessary to do for my kids and stuff like that. So I had to like grow up pretty fast in my, in my twenties. So when it came to like my late twenties and me finding my feet, I found like the um, house music, you know what I mean? Which was obviously like a different genre than what I play, but I found like soulful music, that was like my gateway. So where I found that, and then I started to use that to make my way into what I wanted to do now, because when I'm deciding I'm gonna be a DJ, that would be, it was in my late 20s. So that's kind of where I like, kind of started to find my feet in my late 20s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. couldn't tell you how much times but you know like yeah it was just a spiral you know what I mean it just went through a little a little bad spiral where you know like done something got caught you know what I mean then you know got banged up can't even remember how long I got like I think 12 months or something like that then I came out then I was out a couple of, couple of months bang again another 15 month sentence or something like that so yeah so then I you know like that was um yeah that was a little spell and then like you know you come out and then you think you know I'm gonna fix up you fix up for a year or so you know you think that you're doing you're good you get me you get back into certain stuff that you shouldn't be getting back into and then yeah another 14 month sentence and you know it's like tch, yeah, before you knew it now, yeah, I ended up getting a three years, six months or something like that. Or three years, six months for a couple of things, like in one, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah, yeah, got, uh, yeah, that one there was in there for about two years. Done some like, you know, when you go into these mad places and stuff like, ended up on the Isle of Wight, you know what I mean? And, down there is very, you know, it's very like, you know, it's it's not like a black area or a multicultural area. So the systematic racism was it was crazy up there. It was crazy, but and they, they but they but they're the sort of things that will teach you that that's not the way of life in it because you don't like you put yourself there in it so. You, you think about that now because you think to yourself you don't ever want to put yourself in that situation again like that's like yeah it's 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 not the one you know what I mean because not and not to say that it should exist or anything like that or you know like that it was right in the way that you got treated down there and you know what I mean like it's just it's just mad you know what I mean like the, the way that they would like like handle you in, in such a way, you just think to yourself, you know what, like, you, you, you don't need to be here. This is not the place for you, where you need to be. So, yeah, man, it's, it's kind of teaches you a lesson in a good way, but in a bad way, you know what I mean? But this is, this is life, isn't it? Mm, B3, that's what we're doing, man. Yeah, Scala, it's gonna be a madness. <laughs> Remember I told you. Tim Westwood and Chris Goldfinger, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, me. And it started off on a small radio like that, but you know, yeah, we step it all up, you know what I mean? I come home with a Cobra, you know what I mean? So, yeah, Panasonic Cobra, you know, one of them ones. So, yeah, man, like, yeah, that's how it was, man. That's how it was, you know, it's a survival mode. It's just like the streets, man. It's just, it's a survival mode in there, you know what I mean? And it's a survival of the fittest, you know what I mean? If you, you know, and phew, that's, that's the way it is, man. It is where it is. I mean, meant to get big people excited for the party tonight. But I don't feel like playing old school and rinse because, well, I don't know. Me and last didn't really even discuss that, so I don't even know what's going on. I'm going to bring out the JBLs for the special occasion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You use the sennizers, yeah, it's all good, but yeah. these ones for locked in sound, JBL. Well, Herbal started off with Will and Dagger. Um, they started something called Church, yeah, and obviously, like, I'd known from being from I'd advanced from now the Shoreditch raving, so um, I'd advanced from like because um, it was the funky house as I said like it was going through like the the um, soulful house funky house era, and obviously I just I'd, I'd I'd kind of drifted away from there because like I was going to more like minimal tech parties and. You know what I mean? Like more techno places and stuff like that. So where I was going to them sort of places there, like I was just like, you know, like I'd met, I'd like show shows and all that. I've met uh, Will and all these guys. So I used to hang around with them a bit. You know what I mean? And then like, um, yeah, we just like, he ended up doing a night, as he said, called church. And then like, I ended up going there and it started like at 12 o'clock in the daytime on a Sunday. So, after you've been out from the Saturday night, you go to Herbal Church on the Sunday. And then like, yeah, I just listened to the DJs that was playing there. You know what I mean, I think AC was playing, um, uh, Radford was playing, uh, Max Van Morrison was playing. Um, it was a lot of DJs, man. It was a good few DJs. I can't remember all their names. Yeah, I've just ended up there anyway, so that was my first like in like insight to herbal really. just I was just like going out I was just going out there as a raver although I was still collecting records and stuff like that so where I was collecting records um, like I had a selection of tunes you know what I mean which was like obviously me going out and being at these techno parties or whatever you wanted to call them minimal parties and I'm just asking DJs and that what's the name of this tune what's the name of that tune they're giving me tunes so then I'm going and buying them. You know, I've met two guys that own a record shop, Vinyl Rules, Danny M, Ray Stanley. So like where I've met them, they I'll go to their record shop every week, tw twice a week sometimes. You know what I mean? Collecting records and stuff like that. So 
yeah, I was always ready, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's like, I think obviously that was, obviously it was definitely my calling when I went to church and found that, found that rave, yeah. Church was like obviously as I said going on and um, yeah then they started having an after party upstairs so when they started having the after party upstairs um, I got to play up like basically Will's talking one day and then like they was chatting about the DJs the music and then I just butt into the conversation because I knew them and I'm like I can play better music than all your DJs yeah, and he's like, what, what? And anyway, he's laughing at me, whatever. So yeah, he's basically giving me a, he's giving me a, um, a little sh um, shot upstairs. You know what I mean? And uh, at the after party, so I thought to myself, you know what? Let me, let me just play up there and see what's happening. So yeah, I was playing up there for a little while, and then um, when I was playing up there one day, I was there early and. Uh, Big Will, one of his DJs had forgotten his laptop, couldn't play. There was nobody else in place, so Will's asked me, can you play? And I said, yeah, yeah, I can play, I can play. He's good, you got your stuff? So I said, yeah. So I went, got my stuff, went inside, like, tried to play on like, the CDJs. I, that was the first time I played on them, but I'd, had, I'd got tunes on CD as well, because they were telling me I had to put tunes on CD to obviously be current at the time when I was coming with vinyl all the time. So yeah, I had tunes and then I just went in, played all the tunes that I thought would be right for the rave. Smashed that, smashed the rave, like totally, you get me? Even though I was clanging a bit, but yeah, I still smashed it. And like, yeah, from then, we all said, yeah, I want you every week. You know what I mean? You come every week, you play, you get me, you get paid. So I was like, yeah, mate, I can do that. He's like, yeah, I'm serious. You're going to be seriously DJ. And I was like, yeah. So yeah, that was the transition, really. Big Will, man, he was a good guy, man, you know what I mean? Like, big guy, big guy, you know, like, big guy, a lot of energy, like, you know what I mean? Like, as I said, I used to rave with him before, before, like, um, obviously before I was his DJ. So, obviously, there was a lot of, like, there was a raving relationship and it was like a, you know, we was cool, we was all, you know, we was man them, you know what I mean? Because, obviously, you got to realise I'm just coming away from the streets and all of that, what goes on on there. So when you obviously go into that raving world, you're gonna feel like there was things going on still, you know what I mean? There was a lot going on in that raving scene, you know what I mean? From them funky ass days, there was a lot going on. Believe me, a lot, you know? And yeah, to like stay out of all of that stuff, you know what I mean? It was like, it was all, all a blessing. So when you went into a certain environment now, you're obviously gonna wanna have that like little connection with people around you. So when you're in the rays and that, you feel safe, you know what I mean? You can wear your little jewels and your things and you know what I mean? It's no problems. Like, cause there was problems like that in them days, you know what I mean? So, Will was a good guy, you know what I mean? So like, obviously him and his little, his, his, his crew that he had around him was all good people, you know what I mean? And yeah, man, he was, he was just, yeah, he was a, he, like, obviously I knew he was a guy with a lot of ideas. That's what he was. He was a guy with a lot of ideas and a lot of good ideas. So you know, you know, you know when you when you when you find them sort of people, you know, these these are guys that you gotta keep kind of around you close to like you know what I mean to 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 fulfil your dream. You know what I mean. So if you're smart, you'll see these these people before they come, or you'll see them when they're here, and you think this is that guy that can elevate me in that way of what I need to do on my plan and my dream. You know what I mean? And yeah, Will was just one of them guys. Was uh, this, I 
said, when I joined, I couldn't tell you all the DJs, like, that's why you have to go back to like a, like a flyer or something. I just, but originals would be me, Max and Radford. And uh, there was another guy, but I just can't remember his name. Like, yeah, he's a guy who played kind of a lot like me. But um, I can't remember his name. But they're, they're the original members. And then he left. And that's how it just become me, Radford and Maximus. I'll be on Beatport a lot. So I'll just be, in, like, as I say, I was going to DJs, like, and going to these techno minimal parties, asking, what's this tune? What's that tune? What's this tune? What's that tune? So when I've got a little selection together, then I'll learn how to play that kind of style. Then I kind of found, like, I had a few, I've got a few records in my collection. Like, I must have, like, over half of my selection is probably Tech House. So where I started to say, I realised the difference between the Tech House and the Minimal. So where I realised the difference, I started going into the Tech House and just looking for these tunes with the bass lines and stuff like that. And obviously, like, that was the stuff that kind of, it was the frequencies, isn't it? So it kind of like, you can't help it. Once you've got these headphones in and you're going through all of these tunes and then you hear this one with the bass line and my body just starts moving, isn't it? So from my body's moving, I'm thinking, if this is making me move, it's going to definitely make somebody else move. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's kind of where I got the inspiration from for the, for the music, you know, just listening, just listening, just going through and going through, like getting off my records and going from the artists. So I was just looking at the artists, the ones that was making that bassy sound and just going through all of their tunes and tunes that they made with people and stuff like that. Yeah, so that's kind of how I got the inspiration for that kind of dubby, bassy music. That be free, you know what I mean? If you didn't know about that, then boy, you know. Like, yes, um, yes, at Scala tonight. So yeah, we've been doing parties for the last, oof, for the last, what, about eight, seven years now. So I'm trying to make it a regular party at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, t tonight is just like one of them nights where, you know, yeah, we're just gonna make it happen. It's going down, yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. Um, what's been going on behind the scenes, man? Because a lot of stuff's been going on with everyone. Everyone's busy, like not busy, everything's changing and all that stuff. But what's going on for you, production-wise, DJing-wise, well, the scene, what's going on with you? Let's, let's hear your take. Well, DJ-wise, yeah, I'm still out there. I'm still getting bookings. You know, you catch me on your local flyers, as people call it these days, you know, the audio whores, the house of silks, the siestas, house passions and all of those sort of rays, you know what I mean? And then, like, you know, like we just got all our other stuff going on, like, you know, be free, you know, the DJ, the producing stuff ain't really, like, I, I, was, I was working for a little while, so I took a bit of time off, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I felt a, little, a, a bit of change. You know what I mean? So yeah, like the production hasn't really been going so well at the moment, but I'm looking to get straight back on that because like my son, he's making a lot of music. Yeah, at the I, moment. See, I see it on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so me and him are gonna yeah, me and him are gonna go in and do something. I've got a few other little projects set up with a few people that you know like I might you know just in, invest in, but it's, 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 it's all work in progress at the moment. It's all work in progress. No, of course I hate you. We've transformed now uh, into from church into can't stop, won't stop. Um, Herbal, um, they was losing the building, so um, we had to find a new home for can't stop, won't stop. So big wheel and then done um, done the magic and um, yeah. Um, by then I think uh, Dagger had left. Um, so obviously, um, I think there was another person involved, Dane, and um, yeah, so Dane was involved, and then um, Dane had some friends with, in Aquarium, and then yeah, they struck a deal with Aquarium, and yeah, that's how that's how it become Can't Stop Won't Stop Sundays at Aquarium. Mm, nah, there was no rivalry there. Because Avalon was in the day and Aquarium was in the night, so uh, it was like everybody that was everybody's like stuff. Everyone like who couldn't really go out 
they would even end up there anyway. They'd still end up at Aquarium because now how many people lost jobs and all, all sorts over that Aquarium period. But um, yeah, it wasn't really a rivalry, I don't think anyway, but it kind of turned into that because it was like, they like can't stop, won't stop, didn't want us to play for Avalon anymore and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Because some people are gonna just say, oh, do you know what, we've seen B3, we've seen Radford, whatever, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we don't need to come, can't stop, won't stop now. You know, which is kind of fair, but you know, like, obviously, I, we were just looking at it, it's like the people who are going home are going home, the people who are coming to see us are coming to see us. That's the number one party where everyone wanted to be. So we was just like, you know, we was just looking at it like, you know, it was a, it, it was a, it was a big, it was a big night. You know what I mean? So nothing would stop that night from being ram or or taking any food out of anyone's pockets. We were just trying to elevate as DJs. So I was coming from a, a herbal, a herbal background. Um, where it was multicultural in Herbal. It wasn't just like, oh yeah, the gangsters, no, this, this, what, that. It wasn't none of that. And then obviously when it came to um, Aquarium, like obviously I was more, I was more like, like people was judging me on that crowd. And then I had B3 raves. I started my own B3 raves. That's when people started to see that it was, different because that's not like my crowd like I've never had not one bit of trouble at B3 no fights no stabbings no shootings no nothing you know so like people started to actually see after a while but obviously I was a bit pissed off getting tired with them brushes there because you know like it's like you know everybody went to aquarium wasn't my crowd it wasn't how can you say that there's three DJs, four DJs playing, five DJs playing, six DJs playing, yeah? But yeah, that is my crowd. How, how does that even work? What, is it because we was all black? Or is it because the majority of that crowd that you was talking about was black? Like, I just think to myself, like, it's a bit crazy how you can label me to say that that's my crowd when, when I had my own parties, nothing ever happened in my parties. Nothing has ever happened. So... How was that, you know, and at Aquarium, you know, there was a lot of fights, there was a lot of this, you know, a lot of people fighting with the security, bottles thrown, like, you know, certain times I couldn't get in, you know what I mean? Because there was so much craziness going on outside, you know what I mean? Where they've had to shut the shutters down and, you know, police are outside, there's a guy that's knocked out in the road and, you know, there was, it was all sorts of stuff going on, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I don't feel that, I don't feel that, I just think that how did I have to have that and hold that stigma? for, you know what I mean, for, for no reason. Yeah, that's all I can think of, really. Them times there was a bad, kind of bad time for me because it was like people was trying to kind of rub me out the game kind of thing, you know what I mean? And I felt like, I felt the heat, not gonna lie, because like they were saying that about the bad crowd, as I said, you know what I mean? They was talking about that a lot. And yeah, they was just, it was just like, they was just trying to, People was trying to rub me out, you know, I was just hearing little whispers here and there and stuff like that. And everyone was going on clicky, as you said, you know what I mean? So where everyone was acting in that way, I was just feeling a bit away, you know what I mean? And I've always done this thing that, like, I, I'm on my own. I've done this thing on my own. I brought up my thing on my own. No one helped me do it, you know what I mean? So it, when it comes back to people acting all clicky and you've got that mentality, you really are on your own. You know what I mean? And yeah, I suffered the consequences of that. You know what I mean? And you know, where my mouth as well, my mouth is a bit, you know, as, I, as I've always been, you know, I might say something, as I said earlier, like I might say something a bit too controversial and then people don't want to book me no more. And yeah, I've done, I done it like, you know, where I was, I was under the pressure, like I did it a few times, you know what I mean? And certain people blocked me from playing, you know, I didn't get to play certain raves and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and where where the scene was going on so clicky as well, it was like, yeah, and B3 couldn't get a, a look in, man, for, a, yeah, about a good 18 months, two years, you know what I mean? Like, I was playing here and there, little bits and bobs, but nothing like, you know, the years and the couple of years before that, you know, when I was actually trying to, you know, build my name and build, build my old house, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, that clicky thing really... 
yeah, the clicky thing really, man, that really kind of, you know, that, that kind of affected me in a, in, a, in a bad way, man. Yeah. It was silly, really, because we're all still friends now. You know, so it wasn't, there's no, like, there was no harsh, harsh, like, leavings. It was just, it was just, it just got a bit too much, you know, like, everyone had, you know, everyone, by then, like, you know, we'd elevated as DJs, like, so, so much, like, we'd, um, we'd done a lot, you know what I mean? So, obviously, we was feeling in a certain situation where, you know, if we'd left, would we miss that, you know, would, would, would that, like, that budget or whatever would that be would it be missed or would it be you know because you have to budget life and stuff like that so you have to think you know if I lose that will that you know when I will not be able to pay the rent or whatever you know what I mean so these times now um, yeah people you just, um, people just looked at it like you know what yeah this 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 can be dealt with like like without you know, worrying about anything like that. Just think if I want to be there or not in it. And it was just one of the case of, nah, I didn't want to be, I didn't want to be a part of, part of the, it was just all seemed like, you know, competition and, you know, like people not getting, like, you know, people expecting stuff that, you know, there was some disagreement with Radford, Will, you know, like, then there's a disagreement with me, Will. But I can't even remember what the disagreement was about with me and Will. That's how that's how deep it is. Don't even remember. I don't even remember about the. It may have been about all the playing outs and stuff like that. And I don't, I, don't, I can't even remember what it was like. There was just a few things going on around the time, which was just a few silly things. And because I can't even um, because I remember with me, I would. Talk out, I would like, you know, I was that guy in Can't Stop, Won't Stop that may say that thing that you shouldn't say, you know what I mean? And then, uh, all right, you're off for a month, you get me? Like, one time I was off, I was off for, uh, I can't even remember, a couple of months in, in Can't Stop, Won't Stop because of some, because uh, of something I said or something, you know what I mean? Or something I'd done or, you know what I mean? Like, I'd, you know, because with the, the rule that they didn't really want us to play out on a Sunday and stuff like that and... You know what I mean? Like I was breaking the rules and stuff like that. You know what I mean? And obviously that's why I say it, it got silly. That's 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 what I mean with the silly stuff. So it's, it's petty, really. You know what I mean? But at the time, you know, when you're thinking, can I fly the nest? Because remember, if you're playing every single week for a certain people, people could be paying, as I said, their mortgage with that money, their rent with that money. So it came down to a money thing. Oh, would I? You know, it didn't come down to a I don't like them guys thing. So, yeah, that's what I really looked at. This came down to a money thing. Really? I don't know, man. It's just, it, it was just all, it was just all silly arguments and, you know, it just got a bit, it got a bit silly. You know what I mean? And, yeah, man, as I said, it's so stupid that it didn't even need to happen because we're all friends now. So, yeah, it can't stop worse. It wasn't bitter at all. Can't stop works like exit, you know. Like, yeah, I'm still in contact with Will and that till this day. So. Day. <laughs> uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. I can't. Um, what's it mean? I can't. Um... Everyone used to say it was just. Everyone used to just say it was dark. Like it was just. Yeah, it was just. They, they, I don't know, man. It's like they've been. They've, they've been a few um, magazine clips and stuff like that where they talk about the dark, dubby sound. That's what they'd say. Like it was just like, yeah, man. It was just. 
the Darth Vader sounds like it's just like it was just yeah like dark clouds like <laughs> I don't know man lightning you know what I mean thunderstorms like you know what I mean it was just yeah that's kind of yeah that's kind of how yeah the sound was because me and Redford was never in competition like that but it always was like it was a competition but yeah I, no because I caused that on myself though like I caused it on myself by the music that I played in it. It was like people knew, they came in the room and they said the beef is on. They knew definitely it was me that was on because like, and I always like to have that because obviously that shows you that you created that sound. It shows you that nobody else didn't create that. You created that. And that was by me absolutely going back to this DJ, that DJ asking what tunes these are, da 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 da, going through how my thought that selection would sound. And I put that selection out there of tunes that I knew people wasn't playing. You know, they wasn't playing that kind of genre of the music. So I just thought I'd bring that kind of music to the masses in like, it was in like, you know, because when I, when I went to all of these like kind of techno parties, there wasn't really much black people there. I was probably one of the only like, you know, some, it was hard to get in through the door. You know, some of these was Italian parties and so on, so. You know, that was, um, that was Storm. He wasn't getting what he was thinking that he should have um, been receiving when he was putting that stuff on um, Radford's label. So he just kind of got a bit, you know, like he got a bit, he got a bit, um, he got a bit arsy in it. So where he's got a bit arsy now, he's like, ah, oh, come be, let's just do our own label, rare, 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 right, this, that, the other. He's like, and obviously he's kind of not good with it. He's good with other things, but he wasn't good with these sort of things so yeah like he just yeah said come we just do a label man what should we call it what should we call it and I said let me go home and think then I was texting him about two o'clock in the morning just come to me in the east side records bang send it to him and that's that's where it come from man silly politics, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, A2H was definitely a key, key player. Um, Mr. Solo, he sent a lot of tracks, you know what I mean? Yeah, he sent a lot of tracks, so he had a lot. Archie B, Archie B was a key player, you know? Um, Brain Dead, one of the latter stages, key player. Um, from the start, so there's one more from the start. And well, obviously me, Storm, but obviously we didn't really put out that much on the label ourselves because by the time when we came in with it, we was getting flooded with music. You know what I mean? Flooded, flooded, flooded with music. Like, and it was all good music at the time. You know what I mean? A lot of the music still getting played till today. So. <laughs> Biggest tracks, Sorry's Not Enough, On and On, that did well, um, Cry For You, Tricks, sorry I didn't mention Tricks, he was there from the start as well, key player from up north, <sighs> get me, yeah, that man there, see obviously I'd have to have gone back into the catalogue, so I'm just thinking of all the, the things, but they're just, yeah, I can't come to my head right now.
music that we was hearing, like the music was like, you know what I mean? It was, and at that time, you know what I mean? It was such a, a beautiful time for music, man. It was, it was crazy, man. Like it was, yeah, it was just wicked, man. Like, that sort of time, you know what I mean? Because like Radford, he had like audio rehab, his crew was going on like serious, that like, it was like Riaz and Adam and, you know, they was like making stuff. He had like Hugo and Massians and, like he had a lot of good people in his label making him good music, like James Watt and a few people, you know what I mean? And obviously where I came in, I came in with my raw, mainly new talent that was like, you know what I mean? And we were still in the rankings, you know what I mean? Because obviously the music, like if you go on to the east side and that um, SoundCloud and that, you see how much plays them tunes was getting, you know what I mean? And for us to just come out of nowhere and I, like, I was handpicking them as well, because remember, we were getting so much music. So I was handpicking them, like, or like Storm would say to me, look, what do you think of this one? I was saying, nah, 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 he's not good, you know what I mean? Yeah, nah, he's not good, he's not good, you get me? Nah, nah, we don't want that track. This one, this track needs more, that track needs more. I, I was so fussy, you know what I mean? That's how I was, you know what I mean? But that's how I got that calibre of DJs or that calibre of producers to get such a high ranking in such a, like small time because the the quality of the music was you know what I mean it was a one you know so yeah mm, the issues man it was just like it just took a lot of your time up you know what I mean like it just took a lot of your time up going through music all day and it was all for like you know it was all for a very small benefit you know very very small benefit because you don't make money out of it you know. It's not a, you know, like, like after like three months and you get a little, you know, if you've got a big track, you know what I mean, on your thing. And as I say, I'm on a very, like, fairly small platform, you know, like, you've got a big track. It's not really that much money. It's not money that you're going to look at, like, you know, that can do anything. It's money. Remember, the money's coming in every three months. So it's not non-profitable, you know, so just that's one of the things. And... Yeah, this takes up a lot of time. Yeah, that's all I can really say, man. It just takes up a lot of time for us, minimum benefit, you know what I mean? Huh? Hello, fam. What are you doing? I had me on Snapchat, right? you don't know my team scrap every day. <laughs> TMG to the world and back. Come on, be free, innit? Man, that is putting my head on, innit? Come on, be free. Be down. Who's this? Hey, this is it. Be free, innit, cuz, innit? That's all I'm saying, innit, cuz, innit? If you're not there, I don't know where you are. Yeah? Come on. Come on, man. Oh, shit. I don't get that, cuz. <laughs> Let it fade out, man. I just, like, you know what I mean? It was like, like everyone was trying to, um, everyone was trying to get to this next place where, you know, they thought like, you know, like everyone thought that they was gonna be in this, this next world, standing next to Jamie Jones and Marco Corolla. You know what I mean? So everyone like it. This didn't become like. Like everyone kind of left the scene that we was, that we that we created, you know what I mean. Everyone didn't didn't want any of it no more, you know what I mean. So, yeah, man, that's that's kind of why I let the label fade out. Like there was a lot of and 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 there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uh, uh, controversy surrounding the label. It was signed into um, three people's names, right? It was signed into three people's names. So, obviously, I wanted the label for myself to do what I was doing with the label now because I don't want anybody else a part of that label no more because I've fallen out with um, every, everyone who's basically to do with that label now, I've fallen out with. So, because obviously I've got the stronghold on the label and People were still obviously associating me with the label. I said to myself, I'm going to take the label away. But then people started bad mouthing the label because of what basically Storm's, um, Storm's done. So these times now, 
obviously, where that's all been, you know, like, they've, um, um, people were trying to tell, like, me, like, basically disassociate themselves and stuff like that. So I just let the label kind of go dormant. And at the end of the day, like, it was just a label, it's music to me, and it's quality music. So I was just looking at it on a musical level, where it's to say, you know, if I'm taking over my label, this label is run by me. So then obviously you're dealing with me in the label. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how I was looking at it. You know, not, not looking at it maybe on another other side where other people may have looked at it. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's all I was looking at. It's something obviously that I created, that I built. Defected, well, uh, basically we're working with Deneo. Um, yeah, working with Deneo, done a few tracks. Um, basically, there was a track where, um, yeah, there was a track where work it like basically he'd made the pattern and he'd said to me do I want to work with it so we've opened it we've touched it up done a little few things to it like it was just, it was flat you know like so I was just thinking you know it's a bit it was a bit wishy-washy so I didn't really kind of you know what I mean and then when Deneo's come we've got like obviously a little catalogue of tracks so we've got about 10 tracks and then um, Daniel said, yeah, he's going to go for a meeting at Defected. So he said to me, yeah, have you got any tracks that you think that you'll be able to submit? So I said, yeah, of course, we've got loads of tracks, you know. But obviously the tracks that we made, like obviously I didn't, I knew Defected, but I didn't know, I didn't know like obviously the, the I put that track in there because I thought, you know what, maybe... Yeah, I thought maybe that track there, you know, that they may, they might like that one. Because obviously listening to their stuff, it is a little bit more softer. So, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, that was the way into Defected. That was the, like, the, the gateway was the nail, really. <laughs> work you know he's on it like he's on it like sonic like he still is like you know like this guy will just produce a tune he'll be making tunes in his studio all night and he'll be coming to link you in the morning doing a video review you get me he's like he's non-stop work mate i respect him for that man he's on his job okay yeah so when i met simon um yeah when i met him uh, I didn't really get a, like, because obviously we just met in the defected offices, like basically, you know, he'd said like he likes the track, obviously just meeting the, the guys that's made the track, you know, like, so, yeah, it was just a pretty, pretty short meeting and he just said, yeah, he likes it, he'll like to sign it, he'll listen to it again, he'll tell us if he wants any tweaks, he'll get the contracts sent over, we can have a look at them. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, so obviously um, Deneo co-wrote the, um, the, the track. So um, we basically got obviously solicitor to look over the paperwork and stuff. 
and get those tracks signed. Yeah, so yeah, my first uh, the first meeting meeting him. Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, there wasn't much of a meeting really. It was just a quick, it's an introduction really. <laughs> song in any way because at the time when he he was in prison um like that song obviously had come out and stuff like that it came out and it wasn't in the media or anything like that so it wasn't like you know it's it like i just think that obviously the song didn't get pushed as well as it could have been Plus we had like, you know, there was um there was that tune Desk Jack that came out a few weeks before it. Then there was Storm Queen that came out a few weeks before. So everyone was looking towards those big tunes that was going on at the time. So I just think obviously the tune just didn't get as much as it could have got. So I don't feel that it was because of anything what, you know, may have happened with my man because he was he was doing his thing. Yeah, like obviously I mean he was in jail, so obviously like um there was nothing there was no you know, no big stories or anything like that or nothing like that that came out and um, yeah, so that was yeah, that was that. Yeah, just pay on the door now, my brother. Pay on the door, you can pay on the door. Yeah, just tell the guest list girl you want VIP entry and she will walk you through to the door when we pay you there, yeah? Yeah, alright, cool. Uh, um, just want a tea as well, just want a tea that way. Yeah, I put him down, I put him down. We was doing I was in house entertainment at the time and yeah, I must have just spoke to Dudley. I said yeah, mate, um, I want to do a rave for my birthday. So I said, you reckon you can get me a venue in that? And he was like, <clears throat> all right, then, cool. See what we can do, whatever. I said, yeah, I'm going to need a flyer. What's not, what's not? And then, yeah, just come together, you know what I mean? It was a good, it was a good party. It wasn't named B3 at the time, but it was just Lee Edwards, uh, birthday bash or Lee B Free's B Free's birthday bash. Yeah, that's what it was. B Free's birthday bash. So that's what it was at first, at the start. And then as the years went on, it just grew. So yeah, changed the name. Yeah, I've done I've done a few as B Free's birthday bash, I remember. And then yeah, when I was more heavily involved with house entertainment, yeah, um, yeah, Dudley suggested I just call it B3. And yeah, that's it. Went from there. You remember the first one? <sighs> could have been Brixton Rooftop. Mm. Yeah, it could have been Brick Brixton Rooftop. And that one there was crazy. That was crazy, man. You know what I mean? 
Like, it was a mad, mad, mad. Like, there was about 700 people in there, you know what I mean? That was a mad vibe, it was crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was a good one. It's not really a difference, isn't it? Business is business, man. Like, yeah, business is business. Like, you know, um, I think S is, is S is more militant. You know what I mean? More, 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 more sergeant major. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, when it comes to like, when it comes to getting prepared for your rave. Yeah, he he get he really really got that motivation to get you get you get you going. You know what I mean? Get you going to you know like, and that's what you got to do, man. You got to get going when it's getting. So it's not really a difference. Maybe with house entertainment, we was a bit more laid back, and we didn't you know didn't really have that kind of you know that 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 mad motivation motivational because like the, the, the promo, promo would start three months before and it would be solid promo all the way through like and obviously that's kind of what it, like you know what it takes a lot of the time you know what I mean and I think we was, we was a bit more house entertainment a bit more relaxed in that way where we wasn't so militant and so on on it you know what I mean but in both both of them we both had we both had great parties, so you know, like it's, it's, it's balance, isn't it? The levels, man. Like, yeah, both both with House Entertainment, with S, both had good parties, man. <sighs> that is that is a hard question. Probably one of the hardest questions you've asked me tonight. Um, Sad to say, boy, but I don't see I don't see it coming back. Um, it's just yeah, it's just it's just crazy because you got to think about it. What clubs are gonna be left? You know, like like you got your Ministry of Sound that's getting funding. Like Fabric just man managed to pull through some grant or something like that, and you know they've been out for a year, so they they've been struggling, and these are the big clubs. So imagine how the, all the other little the smaller clubs are feeling the pinch. You know, a lot of clubs have had to let go of staff. So what do you think they're going to have to do in the next six months? Let go of more staff. That inevitably leads to the club not being there or being sold, you know. So I don't think there's going to be much clubs left. And when the clubs do come back, they're not going to, they're not going to care about us, the average, the urban rave or, you know, they're not going to care. They're going to, they're not going to have us in there. You know, it's going to go back to what was started all before this, you know, BLM and this systematic racism and all of this stuff came out and then people had voices in, like, different voices where it was coming in where you'd think to yourself, but you are people that do that kind of behaviour. So I just think to myself, like, yes, yeah, it's just a bit of, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think that the clubs will come back for us anyway. No, not for us. Maybe for the privileged, but not us. You know what I mean? Is that my little big brother? season out there so it was only right at the right time when you can do it like all the start years before that I was working and stuff like that this time I wasn't working I just came out of my job you know what I mean I was doing a lot of like partying at the time the IB for season was going off there was like people was coming from there going to there so I just thought to myself do you know what I go there so much been there so many times I might as well, if we can get somewhere where we can stay over there, 
I might as well just go there and stay there for the duration. And even though I was popping back, coming back over here, doing a booking, flying back over there, you know what I mean? Like, doing, like I started doing bookings over there and stuff. So, yeah, the, the move, the move just got inspired. Just like, you know, one day, like, I can't remember, like, I spoke about it with my, with my girlfriend. She said to her, like, you know, we were just talking about it. And then a couple of months later, she just goes, babe, like, one day she just goes, do you want to go live in Ibiza? Should we do it? And I said, yeah, you know, what we're going to do? And don't get me wrong, it wasn't an easy, you know what I mean, an easy path. You know, all on the way to, like, there was a lot of ups and downs, a lot of doom and gloom, a lot of, you know what I mean, like, where I was thinking, we're not even going, you know what I mean? Because trying to get a place out there and stuff like that is, is really, really hard, you know what I mean? So, and we was going halfway through the, not even halfway through the season, but the season had already started. So people usually do that before the season. So, yeah, it was a, yeah, it was a, it's a good idea, but to actually, take the steps was, yeah, it was really hard, man. Well, you just know that you're there, innit? And you ain't going nowhere, you know? You're waking every day to sunshine. You're waking every day to, you know what I mean? Like, like wilderness, like, that. Because I stayed up in the hills, you know what I mean? So waking up to every day to, like, you know, just, like, forest and, you know what I mean? Like, nice it was just it was just a nice time man it was a it was a good time you know what i mean and obviously you build up your friends who you got around people that live out there you know what i mean people that you built up new friendships with or people that's from london that's staying out there so yeah man good time over there man nice nice vibes and that whoa you can't really go over there and network with clubs and stuff like that. The reason I started getting bookings is because they heard me, you know, they heard them frequencies and they just said, yeah, this, this guy's different, isn't it? So that's, 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 what, that's what they heard. And it was just at the right place. It was at a, like a bit of a, bit of an industry party, like a guy books a, like he's got a big villa. You know what I mean, a massive villa where a few of his friends are staying. And he booked a party to go after the, um, paradise closing party, but it wasn't the paradise closing party. That's what the mad thing was. But anyway, it was meant to be the paradise closing party. So it was everyone was like, you know, and it was a nice um, big, um, it was a big villa, big mansion one. So um, yeah, a few DJs turned up, and then obviously me being me, I've got my USBs on me. I'm just talking about, yeah, um, yeah, I can play this and that music, as I do, you know what I mean? Just talk, just talk, and then people just like finally just say, go on then, get on. And like everyone was asking for me, like saying, yeah, ain't you going on yet? Go on, go on, go on, go on. And then I like, just started playing, I started playing. And when I started playing, like everyone just started getting up, dancing, all of that. And then there was a few promoters there. So yeah, that's how, you know, they just started just coming, yeah, give me your number, what, you can play here, you can play there. I started playing around IB for town and that. Yeah, so that's that. And then started, yeah, just playing wherever, whenever I could get little bookings, little, yeah, I was playing. Yeah, so that's how that kind of worked out. <laughs>
because the only thing I would have done different is went earlier, because if I'd have went earlier, then I would have known more, I'd have been more patterned, because obviously I didn't get the bookings until the end of the season. You know, like, so if I'd have started that at the start of the season and showed them what I could do there, then I would have started getting bookings, like, different, you know what I mean? Or if I'd have, like, done it beforehand, because there was a few people over there that was, like, said to me, like, I didn't know you played like that. So, you know, like, and I'm just like, obviously, like, for me, I played, like, I don't adapt to these scenes. It's because I've been in these scenes and I listen to this music and I download this music. This is the, the stuff that I listen to. You know what I mean? And I listened to all of that kind of, you know, that deep, deeper stuff that I was playing. So obviously it's that kind of music that I believe in kind of thing. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Would I do it again? Yeah, yeah I was about to do it. I was about to do it again this season because obviously, remember, now I've half got it patterned. Like, so... The guys were already asking me, what, you coming out this season? Do, 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 you doing, you know what I mean? So this time now, I'd have had links to a bit better than what I had last, last year. So I was already going to go out there and, you know, try and wing it, you know what I mean, and see what I can do. Like, I wouldn't even have been winging it, really, because obviously I had the links there. So, yeah, I would have went out there and just, yeah, started getting on it straight away, you know what I mean? Yeah, I would have been, been playing. <laughs> It's like obviously it's it's running the world right now. So, in, like in my to say with my life right now, like it's taken a lot away. It's taken a lot away from me, you know. And I'm not just there moaning because people, you know, I can see a lot of people moaning, a lot of people talking stuff, and like you know what I mean. And for me, you know, music has always been my getaway. Always like if I didn't, if I didn't. Have, if I didn't have this music, where would I be now? Because as I explained to you earlier in the thing, I said, like, this is where I came out and it was a transition for me. I found music and I've always been involved in it, but I had a calling and I saw it and I, and I listened to the calling and I followed it, you know what I mean? And there's so many other people that are going to do this now and, you know, what? so what are they going to be, like, Spotify kings now? You know, they're not going to get to get on a stage and... Like you know, make make like, like you know, make history. You know what I mean? Like you know, getting on stage in front of thousands of people and perform. Like this is what like people. You know, you, this is what as being an artist or being a uh, you know like a performer. This is what you strive for. You know what I mean? So to have that taken away, to where you can't even play to a club, you can't even play to a, like you know, it's it's just so crazy. Like where you know you can't play to a any, any people and, you know, like, obviously with all of the, like, like the COVID, like, it's just, it, it, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see an end to how they're going to treat our scene. They've already said, go reskill, retrain. Like, for people like me who's put my, my life and soul into it, that's, that's a blatant, it's a disrespect, you know what I mean? And it's, 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 it's just like a, like a, you know, like a kick in the teeth. Like, you know, you come from all of this hurt and bad and, 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 and all of this, like, like, like pain, you know what I mean? And you try and release it and put it in a good way. And then now they're telling you, and you've been doing it for how long of your life? You ain't asking them for their money. You've never relied on their government system. But now you need to retrain and reskill, you know, like, because it's not recognised as, you know, like, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a bit of a, um, it's not even a bit of a liberty, it's a massive liberty, you know what I mean? Like, 
for these people to talk like that and say these things, do you know what I mean? Because there's people that, you know, like, that, 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 that are like me, would, they wouldn't even be in any sort of position now, they could be dead, you know, like, so, yeah, that's, that's all I can say, you know what I mean? Like, music saves lives. Personal views on COVID, well, all I can say is, like, there's a lot of conspiracy going on around COVID, like, and for me, I just, I, I have to believe what I see, what's in front of me, and I know that people are going to say probably it's not always in front of you, it's not always going to be in your face, but come on, like, like, it, it's, it's, I, you, I, I don't think, yeah, my personal opinion, that it's as deadly as they say it is. Because you have to look at other things, like, you have to look at other diseases, you know what I mean? Like, all of these diseases, like SARS and stuff like that, like, they wipe out, they, like, when they was at their height, they wipe people out, like, you know what I mean? And this one, as, it's, it's done, it's, it's done stuff, but, it's not wiped people out, and they keep saying it's going to wipe. It's going to wipe people out. It's going to be mass graves. They open up hospitals. You know that's the. You know they they're saying, it. and then these things ain't getting used. There's you know doctors. There's people that's coming out. You know, and they're just they're saying stuff that makes sense, but to everybody else they're crazy. But if you're really looking at what's in front of you and how it is and how, 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 how you act, because me, I, I, like, I don't, I don't wear a mask, I'm exempt from wearing a mask, you know what I mean, because, like, these things and stuff, like, I don't feel that these things can stop me from dying, you know, and at the end of the day, I just think, is everybody just afraid of death, like, because they say, if, if you believe in God, or you believe in a higher power, when it's your time to go, it's your time to go, so... I just think to myself, is everybody so afraid to die? You know, and that's like my only, like, you know, my only thing about, like, with, with the media and a lot of stuff like that, there's a lot of scaremongering going on. And what, how, what are people scared of? You know, what are you scared of? Like, and that's, that's, that's my only thoughts on, on, on COVID, really. I'm not, I'm not a scientist. I'm not here to say if it's real or it's not real, but <clears throat> it's definitely not as effective as they are saying it is, you know? And uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's just, uh, that's, that's my only thoughts on it, really. Illegal parties, really. I just, yeah, I just, you know, I'm a participator. Like, you know, I've been to a few forest parties, not gonna lie, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah, uh, for the, the culture of it, it's been going on for years, legal parties. It's not, not since COVID, not since, you know, and these people are just, you know, like, they're doing whatever they're doing, what they feel is right is they, that they're doing. So, you know, I can't wrong them, you know, people are still, you know, on a getaway having, you know, having a good time and, you know, these people you're seeing, like, certainly these people that are doing this sort of stuff, you're seeing them week in, week out, they're, they, you know, they haven't died of COVID yet, so, you know, but they're, as they say, they're the spreaders that will be bringing it all to their families and that, but I'm sure if any of their family had died of COVID or anything like that, that they wouldn't um, go to these places, but unfortunately they do you know what i mean so i can't speak up for people that you know um 
are doing these raves and stuff like that. I, just make, I suppose they just want to be free and just, you know, it's, they still use that music as their escape. You know what I mean? So, you know, you got to just keep each to their, each to their own on what what they're doing, man. Because I don't really look at anybody in any way. If you don't want to, you know, be a part of it, then don't go. You know, if you want to be a part of it, you know, you'll find these places. You know what I mean? That's all I can say, really. Well, the future of B3. Um, yeah, because obviously B3 was just, B3 is just, it's a stage thing. It's a stage thing. When like, I go into B3 mode, it's just like a it's, a, it's a stage show, basically. It's a, you know, it's a whole, it's a whole different vibe for me because that's like a tech house vibe. That vibe there is like, that's like my kind of, my business side. You know what I mean? Because, yeah, I love the music and stuff like that, but it's not a passion of mine. Like, I do like it, but there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of followers to that scene. And there's a lot of like hype on that scene. And as soon as these things happen with these things, like, that's what I'm like, innit? I'll build it, I'll, I'll, build, I'll build it up, you know? And then when I've built it up, I'll run. I'll, I'll kind of not run and leave it. I'll still be there, but I'm always going to the new, to the next thing. Because in this, in this DJ thing, it's like, all right then, you can have a DJ. Or, or all right then, in, as a person, yeah? I can be one person, you can be one person, yeah? But I'm the person that speaks four different languages, yeah? So that's the, that's the difference between me, that's how, how I see the difference of me and other DJs kind of thing. Because when I'm in whatever settings I'm in, I'm kind of trained to, to do, to play in the way that I play, you know what I mean? And you couldn't bring a certain DJ and put him in a certain party and he can play. I don't, I don't, I don't believe so. You know what I mean? Because there's like four different, five different genres of that kind of music, and obviously, like as I was saying outside, there was like the the row minimal side of the music, the minimal side, the tech, the techie house side. So there's all the deeper tech house, you know. Like, and obviously, I've been through all of these genres where another DJ would might just play that one genre and then run with it. So. Where that was a lot in that techie house scene, that's why I kind of, kind of drafted away because, as I said, I'm doing different things. So I'm kind of drafted away and gone over there a little bit. Where obviously I still get love, but it might not be as much love as on that scene. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's kind of how. Yeah, I see it. tell you you know what I mean it's like this is why this is the, this is this is the, you know, like why it's really really upsetting with what's going on now because you know you put your blood sweat and tears literally you know like literally into this life you know what I mean like and you know it's because you know do you know where it is because do you know what do you know what it is with me because I don't want what anybody else has got all I want is what I'm owed you know like I, that's all I want you know, like, 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 you know, if I put in X amount of work, I expect to get X amount of, like, repercussion. You know what I mean? So, you know, if I'm putting in, like, you know, that, that sort of work, like, when I, when I have my rave, you know, support my thing. You know what I mean? Because there's people out here, that, you know, that's putting in major, major work. And, you know, the people are just, they're, they're not, supporting, not supporting you. So, for me, I just feel like, what keeps me going is my own, 
my own drive, like my own drive where, you know, for a few months I will be laid back and I'll just be like, you know what, yeah, I, just, oh, I can't be bothered. And then like, I'll get a book in, play it, a rave, smash it. And then I'll be like, remember who you are, like, remember what you've done, like, you can't just leave this scene, you can't just, you know, you can't just fizzle out. The scene won't let, allow you to fizzle out because you've just cemented yourself in there. So, like, you kind of have to get reminders, like, now and again, for me, like, some get, get little reminders of what I've done and who I am and how, you know, how, what I've done for the scene, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of where my motivation comes from and I ain't gonna let anybody take, take that away, you know what I mean? That's maybe why, that's because I'm very, I'm a tourist, I'm very stubborn, you know, I'm not gonna allow anyone to take away my, what I created or, you know what I mean, come and play sounds like, you know, almost mimic my sound and then go on like I'm not there, you know what I mean? Like, I can't allow them things to happen because obviously, like these young ones coming into it right now, they, they will just like, look at that one and look at this one and think that like, these are the guys, you know what I mean? When really and truly, you know, there's the original guys that have been here that are still here and still putting in the work and putting in maximum effort as well. You know what I mean? So, yeah.